All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary for the first Monday in August 2022. Uh, I want to start off with a question today. And it's just for you guys. Please tell me what happened with the GDP last week. Someone please tell me what happened with the GDP last week. It's a simple answer, but I'm a little worried. <laughs> Negative, dropped. What else can you tell me? I'm looking for a little bit more. There you go. Technically, we're in a recession. We've had two negative quarters, right? So we have two negative quarters. So we are in a recession. Which just goes to having me poke a little bit of fun at someone. The way I see it, two negative quarters, not a recession, it's minus 50 cents. And I really want to say she said that, but uh, <laughs> it is just a joke. But I am definitely going to use that on my Hurley investments. Um, as our, uh, is the fact that yes, we are, we are technically in a recession. And a recession is two negative quarters of GDP growth and it's consecutive quarters. All right. That's going to bring me to what I really want to go over today. Um, huh, how am I going to say this? Um, so people ask me why I do what I do, right? And really what it comes down to is mathematics. Make something on the way down. Add shares to make more on the way up. It's really that simple. Uh, someone asked me, why I don't why I don't do the the regular type of of investing. So why not mutual funds or I'm gonna say just let it ride. And the short answer is I get asked all the time and I have the ability all the time to do it. But again, this one is averages are not your friends. And it's really that simple. Um, to let you guys see what I see, Got to find where it's at. Uh, I had Counterpoint Mutual Funds. I had a Howard Capital opportunity. And this gentleman's out here in Salt Lake. And hey, we want to help you do a self-directed Howard Capital Fund. We do this, we do that, we invest in this, we invest in that. 
Kevin, you bid against us for the Utah retirement systems. But looking at that email, what's the first thing that you see? What do you guys see that that maybe bothers you? <laughs> so they only offer four choices. I like that one too. Risk management tool. I think that one's interesting. I can potentially earn 75 basis points, right? So they led with a way to make money than the typical quarter to 1%. And I clicked on Howard Funds. And here are your four choices. Dynamic income, dividend sector plus, tactical growth, income plus. Well, I wanted to see how dynamic these guys were, right? Let's see, how dynamic are they? So I clicked on the dynamic income fund because I want to see something dynamic. First thing that comes up is right here. And it tells me, hey, you can learn more or it has the perspective. Yes, right? The perspectives. So I downloaded it because I want to see what the dynamic income fund is. All right, sorry about that. Now there are all these shares and I, I just kind of giggle because no sooner do I start going through, and here it is right out of the gate. Maximum sales charge is 5.75. As I went through their stuff, yes. They charge you 5.75. That comes directly from your investment. And then I look at their total operating annual fees. And they're 2%. What fee is not listed here? Any idea? There you go, the taxes. There's another 1.5% to 1.95%. As they pay the fund taxes in here. It costs you 7.75% for the pleasure of being in their dynamic investment strategy. And I just went through, I mean, I really, oh, I, I saw absolutely nothing dynamic about it. It's your typical, once again, uh, 60, 40 garbage. And I sat there and I was just like, man, I can't believe these guys are pawning this stuff off. But again, it always comes back to what have you done for me lately? 
And I'm going to take a little bit of a Kobe Bryant attitude here. Because when I told the guy what I did, and obviously he goes through returns and such, he's like, you're just wasting your time. You're just wasting your time. So my first question was, how can I be wasting my time knowing more than you do? And he tried to explain it to me. He's like, well, we, we both have the same licenses. You know, yeah, you might have a 24, but the 6, 63, 65, 7, Kevin, we all have the same licenses. And it was interesting because Kobe Bryant described how his passion drove him to do more than he expected. And Kobe Bryant would train by getting up at four and train from five to seven. He'd rest. He trained from 10 to 12, he'd rest. He trained from three to five, he'd rest. He trained from like seven to nine and he'd go to sleep again. That was his training schedule where he'd get up at four o'clock and put in those hours Monday through Friday. And then Saturday, and Sunday, he would still do a couple training sessions, but here's what his competitors were doing. They'd sleep in, wake up at 9, they'd train from 11 to 1, they'd rest, they'd do an evening training from 5 to 7, they'd go out and party. Weekends came, they'd go out and party. Those two training sessions that they did they'd hurt with alcohol or drugs, not enough sleep, not enough rest, while Kobe Bryant was training twice as hard as they were, doing twice as much. And five years down the road, if they chose to do that amount of training, they'd never catch up. How can we be wasting our time Running numbers, making up a portion of downward movement, adding shares without asking for more money to be put into the account. As the answer came back is, well, you can't always be right. To where my answer is, yes, we can, but it might take longer for the market to realize it. And the gains are not average yearly gains. Your opportunity is that whatever capital group that just sent me that information. I could put you in a fund and make 75 basis points. Another 3 or 4% comes to me on management fees and commissions. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Let's look at BlackRock. Eight point four nine trillion in assets lost one point seven trillion in clients' money this year. What did they do wrong? Clearly, states being down over thirty percent. Focus too much on passive investing. Can someone here, after we went over it last week, 
What is passive investing? Can someone please tell me? That way we're all on the same page. What is a passive investing? It is don't trade it, but their losses didn't really come from stocks. Their version of passive investing is a lot of fixed income. Too much fixed income in a 60-40. I mean, they're only down like 30 some odd percent, 34 percent, right? They're making adjustments. I highlighted a little bit about. A really famous person called me up panicking. What should I do? I've got to get out. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. And I said, go on vacation. What's typically out there, their help to benefit your portfolio is to tell you to go on vacation. Eight point four some odd trillion dollars lost one point seven. And they brag in an interview to Jim Craner, Kramer, panicking, hey, go on vacation. Blackheart share was troubled by 30% year to date. Um, it's interesting. I appreciate the group we have. I appreciate the group we have because Because you allow me to do something more than tell you to just go on vacation. Because you don't pay me four and a half percent through commissions and fees to stick you in a mutual fund. Because I trade my own money exactly the same way that I'm trading your money. I understand the pain. I feel the pain. I understand what we're doing and I understand why. Some of you have been with me already through a doubling of a portfolio. Some of you are not. We're in the process of it where we've had a down year. Last month was a pretty neat rebound. And I'm showing you this because consumer discretionary last month rebounded 17.2%. Technology, where people were saying, man, I think you're too much in technology, Kevin, it was our biggest gainer of 12.2%. And we're in it because that's what our numbers and our calculations tell us. A lot of people talked about this year, healthcare, energy, consumer staples, communication services. Those were supposed to be the big winners. It's actually these six, right? Financials through communication services. Those were supposed to be our big six. Yet those were the biggest losers last month. Oh, I just... I just wonder... I just wonder where people come up with what they're saying. I just wonder where people's thought processes are. I just wonder how long people are going to be lied to until they can figure out that it's just not worth it to be treated this way, to be put into things this way, to not understand what's happening 
If I was to ask you guys, where are we going to end August, up or down? Where are we going to end August 2022? Flat to up. I was wondering, in fact, I was going to put it up at a positive 2%. Maybe as much as five. So we're going to cut, we're down what, 13? 13.8 with today's. So we're going to gain 8% again. William, did I understand that right? So, Maude, you said flat to up. What's going to move us flat to up? Interest rate hikes? <laughs> that was a joke, Maude. William, what's going to move us up 8%? That we're only going to be down 5%. Wow, so actually Stuart threw something in there that I thought was pretty interesting. And I'm going to agree with it. Sorry. So our market movement, can't type is right now based on inflation earnings right uh, i see so a bunch of things have come in here inflation falling complacency rally you know we call it a dead cat bounce right um poor sentiment more money to spend more money coming into the stock market which is interesting, right? What we're forgetting about right now is China, Ukraine, and the European recession already on their way. Anyone catch what China threatened to do today or this morning? For me, I heard it around 545 Mountain Standard Time. Pelosi, that's right. What did they threaten to do to Pelosi? For those that didn't know, Pelosi headed over to Taiwan, or is trying to head over to Taiwan. Maude said there's some dire consequences if she goes to Taiwan. Worse than that, you know what they threatened to do? Yeah, Stuart got it. They threatened to shoot down the escort jet fighters that would escort her plane to Taiwan. So we have China that threatened to attack US fighter planes that are escorting a US Senator to Taiwan. I won't tell you what some of the texts were going back and forth between me and some friends. But if you're a Republican, you kind of think, well, that might not be such a bad idea. 
If you have any common sense, you might say to yourself, well, that's kind of a, a wasteful way to start a war. But if they're willing to do that to a U.S. senator who's coming for a visit, since they already have seen that the U.S. won't necessarily do anything to a country that attacks a neighboring country, can someone tell me how long do you think it's going to take until China takes over their own providence, no less. But how soon until China takes over Taiwan? I also felt that... Um, I don't know. Uh, the short answer is there is so much negative news. I'm not sure I understand how our markets can continue to go up. For me, I don't see it. I don't see it, and it worries me. We do have a couple things that are are right now running, but I, I don't have a great answer for you. Anyway, earnings dates, Baidu's on the 11th. This week, we have CVS on the 3rd. We have Under Armour on the 3rd. Starbucks reports tomorrow. For some of our core holdings, we have Square on the 4th. If it comes to earnings earnings, Activision, which was purchased by Comcast, reported today, Mosaic. Caterpillar tomorrow, PayPal tomorrow, Uber tomorrow, Airbnb tomorrow, Chesapeake Energy tomorrow, Clorox on Wednesday, eBay, uh, MRO is Marathon Oil, so pay attention to those, Crocs, Eli Lilly, Johnson Controls, Kellogg's, Murphy Order Oil, AMC, interesting to see if AMC is going to make a bounce back. Uh, Jim, yes, sanctions on Alibaba have impacted Baidu, especially since Baidu owns 30% of it. That's why we did not take off our protection on Baidu. We've kept it on. Um, DraftKings on Friday. We're a pretty light week until Friday for earnings, construction spending, and ISM manufacturing which both came in better than expected. Um, ADP employment on Wednesday, non-farm payrolls and private payrolls, average work week reports on, on Friday. As I looked at our charts, I said, I think the week's gonna go lower because we're pretty high in regards to being overbought on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The only reason the Dow is not down 200 points today was because Boeing was up $10, well, $9 and change, right? Finally, someone realized what we've been saying for a year. They've got a good backlog. They have all kinds of opportunity. Boeing's probably only going to go higher from here. Boeing has 
127 uh, 787 is the Dreamliner sitting there ready to get sent off. Their biggest moneymaker. We are bullish on the Dow right now, but we're approaching an overbought territory. Lower this week on the S&P because it looks exactly the same. Kind of a bad signal. We have a doji across. That usually says it's a reverse of direction happening in the stock market. And the NASDAQ looks exactly the same way. Um, all right, what else was I going to tell you, though? Um, I had an interesting report. It's a couple weeks old, but pay attention to a trucker strike on the port of Oakland. We already have strikes and problems with uh, California and their new rules for truckers. This was uh, given to me by one of you guys. So pretty interesting to pay attention to. Watch our next supply chain again be our own doing because of California rules. Biden administration is forgiving millions of debt for Americans. Here's why. Article on why we're going to forgive the debt for all those who chose to go to college and get a degree that maybe they couldn't use. Fed just raised interest rates by another 75 basis points. Here are five things to be more expensive. Credit cards, car loans, adjustable rate mortgages, private student loans, and other variable loans. With all, all, all honesty, Mortgage rates have been hiking even on fixed mortgage rates. So, to, again, to take a look at this article, it's slanted. It's slanted and not accurate. Um, the car loans will be a big one because we're really already so far out of typical standard car owning times i think we're still owning our cars over 10.2 years where we used to be exchanging or the average length of a car was in that seven seven point nine years the house passed a bill last week to boost u.s chip production i've got some information on who voted for it and why and what it does but it's uh, it's been just a busy week. I need to apologize to you guys. I did not follow through with uh, my REIT presentation. One more time, um, I'm going to be doing it again on Wednesday night and saying that to you on Thursday. I did not get it done last week. I will get it done this week. Keeve is heading on a vacation, so he's unavailable Thursday and Friday. And at Thursday at our trade findings and adjustments time frame, um, I've got appointments with Jared. So uh, all the stuff I have on the reads that I didn't get out to you guys last week, I promise you I will get out to you this week. And again, we're not going to do a Thursday because Keeve is on vacation and I am at doctor's appointments. But I will have it pre-recorded for you Wednesday night, and I'll send it out Thursday morning. Um, with that said, um, I just went over information because, in all honesty, if people are going to ask me how I'm trading, I've got protection on some core holdings, still making decisions on earnings, and after earnings, I am letting some stocks run so that's how we're trading portfolios today any questions you guys have for me that i can answer for you any questions that i can touch base with you guys and say hey what what do we what questions do you have on what we're doing or why what can I answer for you guys that'll help uh, try to help out in any way, shape, or form? And yeah, you know what? That's a great question. So 
let me pull it up really quickly. For those of you that maybe haven't noticed it, especially on these two, down day today, but Meta started rising. And yes, we took off our protection on Meta. The reason why we did that was because we saw it down here at the bottom. Our expectation is that big money is going to come back in. It was down at the bottom at that triple bottom stage. So it took our protection off for a slight profit. So yes, on Meta, we took protection off. That's one we're going to let run. We're looking to let it run from 159, 160 up to the 173.54 range. Then we'll look to add protection on it again. And yes, same thing with Ford. We are letting Ford continue to run. Ford had awesome earnings. It is over bought right now. But if you look at Ford, yes, it's literally run from $12 up to 15. So yes, you've noticed those are some without protection. You'll probably see Apple without protection on right now. Boeing does not have protection right now. And Visa, yes, you guys mentioned Visa. If you're in shares, we have not protected the shares. If you're in the leap long calls, we also are not protecting uh, Visa right now, but the reason why is because it's fighting to hold the 200 day. We look at it, and what do you, Kevin, what do you mean, right? <laughs> I already just saw what you said. So the 200 day is sitting at 211.01, and it closed today above that at 211.36. Literally, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven trading days that Visa has been fighting to stay above the 200 day. Usually, you only have two or three. Two or three, it eat, eats up all the buy orders and it tanks. We are watching Visa very carefully. And um, the short answer is we have left it unprotected, but we're looking to see if it holds that 200 day is our short answer. Uh, what's your target on Ford? Probably still up at that 2750 range, but last time it was fully valued at 25, we started taking some, we halved our protection on it, went up to 2587, then it fell down. Um, yes, Abraham just came on. Arrived late, probably for it. An extra downturn is higher till end of year. Yeah, I mean, the reality is, it seems like we don't have the the numbers don't add up to where our market's heading right now. Well, our market's forward projecting. Well, six months from now, our market looks even worse. So that's kind of a foolish um, thing to say, in my opinion, when the market's fundamental reasons aren't there in place. All right. Any other questions you guys have? If not, I'd like to thank you guys for being here. Always fun to talk with you. Always fun to let you guys ask me questions about what we're doing and what we're thinking. Always good to go over your options, right? <laughs> and uh, to show you what we see on a pretty consistent basis. All right, guys. Hey, have a wonderful evening. Again, expectation is still that we're probably going to go more to the downside than the upside. And Abraham, Europe is in a recession already. 
I think they'll be one of the triggers to create a, a worldwide recession, and they will probably be dragging other markets down. But they're in trouble. They're in trouble with inflation, with energy. Um, Europe is is in <laughs> in big trouble. Do you come to Brazil? I want to. I want to get back to Minas. Got friends in Belo and got friends through all those little cities all through the state of Minas. Uh, Abraham, where are you living at right now? Abraham, Sao Paulo. All right. Gorgeous city. What time is it there? It's crowded. Well, you and I will go hang out and we'll we'll travel around Mina de Dice and go have some fun. Get a bunch of pounds of queijo. 9.44 p.m. Great. All right, guys. Hey, have a wonderful week. Pre-recording will come out to everyone on Thursday morning. I apologize for last week. Uh, it was just harder than I thought. We're uh, Jared's doing significantly better for those of you that keep asking. Uh, when I say significantly, though, we just, you know, there's one thing a day that kind of is something that gets better at. And we just hang on to that one thing a day. It's a really slow process. So one thing a day gets better at. We hang our hat at it and we look for the next thing the next day. And we just press forward the best we can. All right, guys, pleasure being with you. Look forward to seeing you next Monday night, recording Thursday morning. And you guys take care. Bye-bye.